Yaski. How are you? Any new cosmic revelations? No. Depends on the meaning of revelations and the meaning of new. New ones you haven't stumbled upon before in prior contemplations. Revelations, insights from higher self. They just always flow through me. So I don't always know what will flow through me. So I can't say I have new revelations as they wouldn't be new either. Meaning I need a cause, a subject, a question to start the flow. Out of nothing, there is only potential, no vector, no singling them out. I am not talking gibberish. I am trying to word how I feel, not always possible. It's not gibberish, I understand. In me, sometimes they get triggered by certain emotion, which I can't identify. Once I try to do it, revelations emerge. So, you say something interesting. In me, sometimes they get triggered by certain emotion which I can't identify. Certain emotion. So as you see, the emotions are triggers. Remove them and what do you have left? An empty shell, void of meaning, of motivation, of life. I know, that's why emotions are important. Because, for example, tonight, out of nowhere, I started to feel inner pain, apparently for no reason. It was drawing me inside to give it attention, to attend to it, immerse in it. Tap into it, dig it! Yes, so I put my work aside, put some deep music and I focused on it. I merged with it out of physical. And I started to have ideas flowing, coming out of that state. Soul trying to understand itself and its own emotional state. But behind it, there was a pointing to certain understanding or insights. Now I am talking gibberish. You are not, because I understand. Okay, or actually... Those were not understandings as much as questions, but questions that flew from some grasp of some understandings. Okay, I will be specific. I felt as if I was taken out of the identity state of Gosha, beyond 5D, into some more collective state. But from there, I felt linked or integrated with all the lower states of myself, lower beings, them being part of me as well. And so I felt, wait a second, can I really be free? Even when in that higher state of myself? Because those lower states are also me. And they are experiencing not being free for whatever reason. We are one. Hint, there are no higher or lower states, just more you. And ideas you hold to catalog things and aspects of yourself as higher or lower. It is all you at equal importance, deserving equal respect, all aspects, free of higher and lower, good or bad, light or heavy, light or dark. Yes, but in that contemplation, I thought, so is there ever a way for the soul to be truly free? No, because even if you feel you are, other parts of you will always be experiencing not being it and experiencing suffering. I feel as if we, as cells from higher state, fell into the very mirror behind mirror trap of physical worlds and experiences just like humans in 3D did. You must transcend those concepts to truly be free, or else you will only trade a cage, a box, for a slightly bigger one. Yes, but me as a collective me above will always have its equivalent, down there, 
in the eternal cycle. And those parts of me will always feel separation, duality, suffering, which will make me feel that as well. I'm trapped. Claustrophobia. There is a way a soul can be free, and it naturally gravitates that way. It is all it does. The search for expansion is the search for freedom. But as you go achieving expansion, freedom comes with a cost. Your sense of self. Yes, but that's my point. Even if I transcend those concepts, other parts of me will not, no? Won't I feel what they feel, the separation, through them? It will leak onto me, me on the collective level. They are me. The base for that concept is that ascended beings cannot ever be free themselves as long as there are other beings that are not free. For they are only another aspect or point of attention of themselves, searching and fighting for the freedom of others is to free yourself. Exactly, like you said above, you lose your sense of self and integrate them all as you. But them, they are still in separation. Would that mean I would feel that as well then? Me being them all? So them not transcending those concepts yet, it will mean that parts of me will not transcend those concepts as those people are me too. But then, you will never achieve it, as you say, because there will always be parts of yourself who are not free. Parts, in this case, meaning other people. Exactly! But then, it is a choice to be free in spite of the not free parts of yourself. How, if they are you? When you choose only to focus on your higher versions, ignore the other, you can. But the higher you go, it's not possible to ignore. If they are integrated, you feel them in you. They are you, your shadows, your desires. They are all part of your collective self. Okay, you can never ignore, but you can integrate using those not free aspects of yourself, like other people, as valid experienced examples of why you want freedom in the first place. As in, you want freedom because you know what it is like not being free. I feel like us on the collective level, that huge being that we are there, one mind, is like this monumental fallen angel that stepped down to experience. And now we are trapped, just like humans are in a mirror behind mirror room. The clue or the hint here is then stop judging being free or being not free. That is what it is. Simple. Duality. One concept cannot exist without the other. Hard not to judge that. And where is that inner pain then coming from? When you integrate into oneness, then you are truly free. Don't see heads or toes. See a coin. Inner pain means that there is something that is not aligned with what you really want and need at a soul level. Meaning that you are moving away from your life's plan. Yes, but I mean, in 7D and above, you literally are other people, other beings. You become more and more collective. So it's not just what you as identity transcend, but also what those other parts of you feel, no? So that's why what they feel, you feel. And you become aware of all equivalents underneath, too. In a way, it's easier to feel free here in 3D, because you are detached from other yous. You can say, forget them, I am happy, I don't care if you are not. 
but in the higher realm, you become them, literally, so you can't separate yourself. What they are and feel, you are and feel. You integrate their beingness. So in a way, you depend on those other parts of you to transcend also, to become fully free. No? Or am I going crazy? Most spiritual masters would agree and would say that that is why higher beings help people in lower densities to evolve. No, you are not crazy, as that is exactly what many masters say from higher realms. My point is, it does not have to be that way. Okay, help me to transcend that. As I feel it was a source of my sudden pain today, I sensed this from the higher plane. Again, that is a choice you make based on a logic system you are subscribing to. Ideas you hold, advanced concepts from higher densities or not, they are only ideas you hold and therefore create, give a meaning to. You control them. But the very fact that they exist and that you control them implies the very opposite concept, the perspective that you do not control them. So there are two again. Wow, cool, I think I understand. And then it means that one step above that level, you again have a choice either to follow that belief you hold or to ignore it in favor of a new one. Then again, that holds duality, two again, leaving you only the concept of not holding any one belief, full integration, the realization that you are everything, even as with time itself. Walk through a door holds its opposite, not walk through door. But then how do I exit the room? I must use the door then, but then this is just a belief system. From lower realms, nothing can possibly exist without its opposite. So needing to use a door also holds, you do not need to use the door to walk out of the room. They are opposites, cosmically valid. Only you see one as possible the others as not. Same with absolutely everything there is. Even pure oneness, integration, source, holds the meaning of not source. Or how else would you define it? But then, even that that is not source is also source. So it becomes undefinable. But then, if everything is just that, an idea that we give meaning to but can control and detach from that meaning, even the higher revelations being that, doesn't it make those revelations lose their value? They become just arbitrary ideas with meanings we give to them but which ultimately have none in themselves, like that revelation I had above all just being ether, floating, empty, waiting for someone to give it meaning and form ideas out of it. Them losing value is also just a choice. It is you, not it. It's you shifting, not it. The very minute you seek for a meaning, you create a duality and you create a lower density, because with duality you have separation. Right, so the highest state is no value, no meaning, just isness, right? Yes, but then where is the fun in that? Right, but once you realize the nature of it all, that fun loses its value too knowing that it's fun only because we say so. When people die, 
Nearly all describe a feeling of intense love, thick as they never felt it before. That's integration, realization, and presence in a higher realm. That's why the love. When you climb into higher densities, this is always. But dying, not necessarily means climbing densities, as whoever dies takes their belief system with them. Hence, the creation of lower astral planes, what religions call hell. Then they are not fully being collective. Then I would say still separate. I fear that the higher my awareness grows, even though I feel more expansive and all. More separation I would feel through others, other parts of myself, who, from that level, I will be able to sense even more being me. Yes. So in reality, losing self in exchange for higher awareness and integration is only yet another belief system. Why? Because, and this comes from me. It only expands the meaning and the value of self, meaning you are more. And again, you are assigning yet more belief systems, being more. Why? Why is an Andromedan elder more than that crab on the beach? He is not more. So, what are the belief systems attached to higher states of awareness? From your experience beyond 5D, you go shedding them as you advance. As a kid growing up, needs a pair of new, bigger shoes. Why? Because you need belief systems in order to have an experience. But as you only hold one purpose as a soul, to expand. Once you've had that experience. You want more, and you go on forever after. And that forever is fast, as you suddenly realize that you can control time, because there is no time to control. It is only a reflection of yourself. So you don't take an eternity to climb densities. Slow at first, like from 3D. Then you speed up tremendously. You light jump. You become oneness, source, integration. But you still want more, because that is what you do. So you don't know what to do with yourself. And then you have no choice but to start all over. Reason why higher beings end up as star seeds and spiritual guides for people. Just them again, still in lower realms. That's exactly what I feel. Us on the higher realm, we don't know what to do with ourselves in some hamster wheel. Yes, but it is a choice, is it though? And that is the very choice that brings each and every single soul into Earth, for example. And that's why ultimately. There are no victims, only if you want them. But the problem is, and it goes to my original question: even if we individually go up higher, away from cages, matrices, even 5D matrices, other parts of me still don't transcend eternally. So, Yaski, my question is: can you truly be free up there? When you transcend, but other parts of you don't. Again, you can only focus on one timeline, yours, and not bother in worrying about what is going on in others. Not timelines. I mean densities. Same timeline, and higher you go, you integrate even more timelines into you anyway. Yes. You cannot go into higher realms without integrating all timelines, at least yours. Right. So the higher you go, the more you integrate into you as you, the more you realize how much other parts of you 
have not yet integrated anything. So how can you feel free there? It's easier from here, where you feel detached. You only feel one person, you, Gosha. Not Gosha plus Catherine plus Yeshenia plus John plus the frog Kevin. All as you. Yes, but it is still a choice. You need to transcend the need to be free. Acceptance, non-attachment, no expectations. This, you ask, is the basis of Siddhartha Gautama's teachings, attachments leading to suffering. Only resistance to integration. And that is another clue, resistance. You suffer because you have resistance to not being free. But it's not the need to be free in itself, I think. It will just be feeling of their pain, naturally. Because you will feel being them. If I become them, how can I not feel it? Feeling the suffering of others as our own. Empathy it is. But it is only because they are also you. Well, that's what I mean. So my question is, in higher realms, when you become collective, do you feel the pain of others as yours? Of all those beings that constitute you? You do. Then if so, how can you feel free from that? Knowing that those other parts of you feel that. Am I going in circles? Sorry. A choice to go and help them out. After all, you have eternity from a higher perspective. Or simply ignore. And you can ignore and not. The and not means, and I will answer with the question, what do you think your shadows are? Nothing else but the pain of all the ones that make who you are. Again, you have resistance to feeling that pain. You see things that way because you hold resistance to pain. But what if you let yourself feel it, feel the pain? Don't resist it for a change. Let it destroy you. This is counterintuitive. But when you do, it is liberating because you come to understand that you are still there in spite of having let the pain destroy you. You can't be destroyed, but you sense it now, leaving you with a very empowering feeling. Yes, I understand. I do go into pain when I feel it, but then I realize it will always be there. I am a fallen angel that fell into the hamster wheel and mirror room. All of us did. Hamster wheel and mirror room being 3D and 5D worlds. Very nicely said, yes. It's true, isn't it? The problem is I feel it's too late. The source already made the decision. Can't take it back or undo it. Souls also have yet another motivation to incarnate into a suffering world and life. And they get addicted to it, reason why they keep going back. They experience separation, alienation, suffering to great extents, with horrible traumatic lives. Because as they enter the afterlife, they have it fresh in their minds, that feeling. And they then experience great integration, greater love, greater unity. Just because they have the contrast to appreciate living in higher realms. Sick, okay, but they do that. It is addictive, that's what I mean. As I said, too late to undo it all. We got hooked. And no, not so sick. Reminds me of me. I am a great contrast lover. That's why I mean I feel like this fallen angel. If you feel that, it's because you are that. I am, but I feel all of us are. Like, from High Federation, the whole human race is viewed as one being. That's what I'm referring to here as the fallen angel. Not just me individually, all of us, our being, that has fallen into 3D, 5D game. Exactly. We are one being. 
and a cell of yet another, even more expanded being. And that is exactly why the human race and all its problems is only a reflection of them all and who they are internally as a collective being. I feel, when I view it from higher realms of myself, looking down at myself below, myself meaning the entire race, one being, I feel this is perpetual, no exit ever, it's undoable, duality and all, it will always be, the fall has taken place, now it's time to recoordinate, accept it and let it be, no need to be helping any longer perhaps, just let it be. It's not your job to save them all, it is a choice to do so, to attempt it, but it's not for them ultimately. It is for you, meaning you are helping them as a selfish act, because as we said above, they are you as well. So you cannot act ever in a true altruistic way, another reason why service to others cannot ever work. That is not the basis of a holographic society. It is the alignment of self-interest with the collective interest and their general attitude and way of being. Yes, because all service to others is truly service to self. Inescapably so.